Good morning, Jerusalem. Is it well with your soul? You know, every Sunday when we end our worship time with the Lord, I usually end with some saying that you should have become accustomed to by now. One of those saying is, as we get ready to go, let's remember what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have felt. Then we'll sing our departure chorus, and we'll end with a benediction. Now, over the years, I've noticed many of you, especially the young members, saying those words along with me, because I've said them so much that you know it's coming, and many of you have memorized that portion of the service. And you know, I'm really glad that you have, because while some may think it's just a routine statement that I say, it's actually a scriptural admonition that means more than just what you hear. The statement that I'm referring to is based upon the words of scripture that are found in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 9 to 13. So turn with me there and let's read together Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 9 through 13. If you found it, it reads as follows. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligent. Lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in horror, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. And he came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire to the midst of heaven, with darkness, with clouds, and thick darkness. And the Lord spake to you out of the midst of the fire. You heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude. Only you heard a voice. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform even ten commandments, and he wrote them upon two tables of stone. Did you catch that? You see, this admonition that's given to Israel was to keep thy souls diligently, yes, thou forget what thine eyes have seen, lest they depart from thy heart, and that you keep my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they may live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. This triune admonition by Moses to Israel should also be one that we should heed as well. And every Sunday that I say it, it is a personal reminder to me to make sure that what I preach and teach is something that you will remember what your eyes have seen, your ears have heard, and your hearts have felt. So from that passage this morning, I want to talk about lest we forget. Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you that you have blessed us with another day and another opportunity to praise your holy name, to worship you in spirit and in truth, to glorify you for your greatness toward us. We love you, we praise you, we thank you for your sovereign care and concern for us and for keeping us throughout this time of uncertainty through this pandemic and through all the unrest that's going on in our nation. Be glorified this day, O oh God, and help us to remember all that you've told us to do in your word. Give us now ears to hear, hearts to believe, and wills to carry out your divine will. We'll give you the glory, praise, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray, with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. lest we forget. For 400 years, Israel as a nation had suffered under the harsh taskmasters of the Egyptians. Day after day and night after night, their cry went up to God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, wondering, how long, O Lord, how long will you suffer us to be afflicted? And although it seemed like God did not hear their cry and complaint, little did they know that God was working all things out 
out of the counsel of his will. See, somehow in the midst of their suffering and anguish, they had forgotten the words of promise that God had spoken to Abraham in Genesis chapter 15, verses 13 through 14, as he made his covenant with him. It says, and he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. You see, while Israel was crying out unto the God of Abraham, they actually had forgotten what God had told Abraham. And too often, we find ourselves doing the same thing. We will cry out and pray to God in our anguish and with our complaints, yet most of the time, God has already answered us in his word. We have just forgotten what he said. For example, when we think it's too hot, we can't. We say, oh, I can't wait till it's winter. And then when it's too cold, we say, oh, I can't wait till it's summer. And we complain, oh, I wish the Lord would do something about this weather. Well, he already told us in Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, that while the earth remained, seed time and harvest and cold and heat, summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. So just thank him for whatever the weather is doing and let him do what he's going to do because your complaining won't change it anyway. And that's just one of the many things that we do because we forget that God is not like us. God is faithful and he has never and he will never ever fail to fulfill his promises because God cannot lie. That's why it is so interesting that Israel is acting the way that they're acting because they have forgotten God's promises, but God had. In Exodus chapter 2 and verse 24, it says, And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. Listen, my brothers and sisters, we can be assured that God won't forget his promise to us because of who he is. So the real issue, what will we do lest we forget? Our text this morning is situated at a time when Israel is about to enter into the promised land and Moses is giving them a final admonition before they cross over the Jordan River. Now, what should have been a totally joyous day is not the case because of the fact that Moses is not going to be allowed to go over into the promised land with them. You see, in chapter 3, verse 26, he reminds them that because of his actions, as they complained about having no water, God was not pleased and his punishment was not to be allowed to enter the promised land that he had led them to. Let me just pause and say how sad that is. I mean, after all that Moses has endured and put up with, with Israel's constant whining and complaining and unappreciative attitudes and behaviors, you would think that God would say, okay, Moses, I understand that the folks just got to you. It was a rough day and you just had had about enough as you could take. But no, that's not what God said. God's word to Moses was, because you trespassed against me, among the children of Israel at the waters of Meribah Cage, in the wilderness of Zen. And because you sanctified me not in the midst of the children of Israel, yet thou shalt see the land before thee, but thou shalt not go thither into the land which I give the children of Israel. God says to Moses, and this really is an admonition to us pastors and leaders, I don't care who you are and what you've done in the eyesight of the people. You better honor me and not the people because I'm the one that puts you where you are and I can either promote you or demote you. Take your pick. And that's why, remember, you should pray for and obey your pastors in the Lord because they must give an account to God for their stewardship over his people. And we want to go to the promised land too. <laughs> well, that's a sermon for another day. 
But it's a good one. Well, as Moses gives Israel this admonition, he emphasizes three things to them. And the first one is, don't forget what your eyes have seen. Now, if anybody should have been convinced to trust and believe that God was God, it should have been Israel. They, like no one else, had a front row seat to the miracles of God. From the plagues upon Egypt to the pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. From the part of the Red Sea and the ground being dry that allowed them to walk safely across to the daily provision of manna and quail that they were given for 40 years in the wilderness. From the commandments of stone written by the finger of God given to Moses for them to obey to the water that was gushing from the rock at Cadiz that caused Moses to disobey God and forfeit his own entry into the promised land. Yes, Israel had seen that and a whole lot more. And they're reminded not to forget what their eyes have seen. You know, it's amazing to me sometimes because I have heard people actually say, man, had I been living back in those days, seeing all that God did for Israel, seeing all the miracles he performed, man, I would have no problem believing in God. But you know, you have seen it. Because the same God that performed them then is the same God that performs them now. You just have been looking with the wrong eyes. Let's see. He placed ten plagues upon Egypt. And then he kept Israel safe. He has kept you in the midst of floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, coronavirus, the flu, lead contaminated drinking water, chronic waste and disease from deer meat, SARS, Ebola, air pollution, West Nile virus, and not this Sahara desert dust, and a whole lot more. He led Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And every day, the sun lights your way and the moon guides your night. He parted the Red Sea and led Israel across on dry ground. And then he pulled back his mighty hand and the waters went back into the sea as before and he drowned their enemy. For some of you, God has promoted you on a job and you were not even in the running for the position. For some of you, he's protected you from a layoff when all other departments were shut down. For some of you, he's caused the ditch that your enemies had dug for you to be the very one that they fell in. And it wasn't because you were better than they are, more deserving, but it was his grace and mercy that watched over you and kept you because of his love for you. And to not recognize or see God's mighty hand in your life, providing and protecting and prospering you the way he has, it showed that you have been looking with the right pair of eyes. God made a way for you when you did not see a way because he wants you to trust him and walk by faith and not by sight. Therefore, you don't need to have lived back in the days of Moses to see God's miracles taking place to believe him. Just consider your own life and what he's done for you. In John chapter 20, after Jesus had been resurrected from the dead, he appeared to his disciples behind closed doors and showed himself to them. Now, Thomas was not there and did not believe them, but he said, unless I see the nail prints in his hand and put my hand in them and also thrust my hand in his side, I won't believe. Well, eight days later, behind those same closed doors, Jesus shows up again. And he goes straight to Thomas and says, Thomas, Reach into thy finger and behold my hands, and reach into thy hand and thrust it in my side, and be not faithless, but believe. Thomas does so, and he declares, My Lord and my God. And then Jesus says to him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. You know, I wasn't there. When he walked on the water, I wasn't there when he made the blind man to see. I wasn't there when he preached up on the mountain. I didn't see. I didn't hear. But I believe. I believe in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And I believe in the Bible, which is the word of God. 
And so we need to take heed lest we forget what our eyes have seen. But secondly, let's take heed that we don't forget what our ears have heard. Moses' second admonition is that they remember what they heard. He then reminds them of that event at Horeb. In the text, he says, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, gather me the people together and I'll make them hear my word, that they may learn to fear me all the days that thou shalt live upon the earth and that they may teach their children. He says, and he came near and stood under the mountain. And the mountain burned with fire from the midst of heaven, with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. He heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude, only heard a voice. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform even ten commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. Moses says, y'all remember that day? And y'all told me y'all wanted God to talk to y'all. And God told me to get y'all together and bring y'all to the mountain so he could tell y'all himself what he wanted you to do. And when y'all came to the mountain, it was thundering and, and the mountain burned with fire. And it was not just dark. It was a thick darkness. And y'all wanted God to speak to you. But when he did, y'all were scared to death and thought you were going to die. And y'all said, ooh, Moses, don't let God speak to us. Moses, you, you speak to us and tell us what God said. But when I tell y'all what God said, y'all don't want to believe me like I'm making it up. And so that's why God put what he said on two tables of stone. So it'll be a testimony against you and you not have any excuses and say, well, no, God, Moses didn't tell us. No, nah, it's there on the, on the tablet and you can read it for yourself. And he says, don't forget what your ears have heard. And watch this. Just to make sure y'all didn't get distracted, God only spoke to you. You didn't even see his body or an image. Because had you been able to see him, you would have been so awestruck with what you saw, you would have never heard a word that he said. You know, my brothers and sisters, in the midst of all that's going on in the world around us, it's easy to get distracted from God's word to us. When we see all the hatred around us, we forget that God said, love your enemies and pray for them that despite to use you. When we see the injustice being done and, and we forget God that sold us do justice and love mercy and walk on before your God. When we see laws being enacted that are in direct opposition to God's word, we forget that God said, Righteous exalts a nation, but sin is reproach among the people. And when we see people doing the same thing over and over and over again against God, we forget that God said to the question, how often should I forgive my brother? Well, he said, not seven times, but 70 times seven. See, we must be very careful that we don't allow what we see in the world to overshadow what we've heard in the word of God. That's why it's important that we walk by faith and not by sight. Because things can look discouraging, but God can encourage us. Things may look bad, but God can bring about good. And things may look impossible, but God can do the impossible. You know, I wasn't there when he taught them how to pray. I wasn't there when he calmed the raging storm. I wasn't there when he fed 5,000. I didn't see, I didn't hear, but I believe. We just got to remember what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and finally, lest we forget, don't forget what our hearts have felt. He says in the text, only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. In other words, don't let them depart from your heart. See, the heart is not just a seat of emotion, but it is the life of an individual. And Israel's understanding of the heart went very deep. Throughout the book of Deuteronomy, Israel is admonished to love the Lord thy God with all their heart. 
This begins in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 5 and is repeated over and over again. And in the New Testament, Jesus, when asked what is the greatest commandment of all, he cites this one as the one. The heart in Hebrew is lead, and it is centered around the person's being. Now, the Greeks only saw the heart as emotions, but the Hebrews saw the heart as mind, will, and emotion. And when Israel is commanded to love God with their heart, it was not a command just to each individual to do what they want to do, how they want to do it in their own time. But it was a covenant of the community that was to be expressed by everybody. Again, in Deuteronomy chapter 32, when Moses reiterates this to Israel and tells them to take these words in their heart, it is in the imperative tense, meaning that this is a command, not just an option or a suggestion. So what does all this mean when I say, remember what our hearts have felt? Well, it means that we should make sure that the things we've seen God do in our lives and the things we've heard him command us in his word should be so treasured in our hearts that it becomes our very life. Yes, we might get emotional, but we've got to be spiritual. We must seek to love God with all our heart, which encompasses our mind and our soul. Everything about us the whole fiber of our being should be rooted and grounded in the word of God. Every ministry that we engage in should be at the heart of God. See, God's heart should determine what we do and how we do. And that is why we must remember what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have felt. You know, I wasn't there when he died out on Calvary. I wasn't there when he rose from the grave. I wasn't there when he ascended up to glory. I didn't see, I didn't hear, but I believe. And you know what else? I believe that he's coming back for me. And I believe that he's coming back for you. Out of all the things you may say about him, I didn't see, I didn't hear, but I believe. And that's what we must remember, my brothers and sisters. What our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have felt. Lest we forget. Let us pray. God, thank you for your grace and mercy to us. Thank you for your loving kindness to us. And thank you, God, for the assurance that you have spoken to us in your word. And you've performed so many miracles before our eyes. And you've touched our heart to truth that we shouldn't forget at all. Lord, it was at the cross where we first saw the light. It was the gospel that we heard. And it was your Holy Spirit that transformed our heart. And I pray, God, that we will never, ever forget what you've done for us. Let us always remember our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, our hearts have felt. We give you glory, praise, and honor. In Jesus' name we thanks you. Amen and amen. My brothers and sisters, and yes, I'm going to say it again right here. Let's not forget what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, our hearts have felt. And as you go, don't just forgive somebody. Because someone needs forgiveness now. This opportunity presents itself. Share the love of Jesus Christ with those you come in contact with. Because remember, at Jerusalem, we are ministering with eternity in view.